Hey, it's Chan Sarah with DriveTheLightning.com. Another Hi. short video. I think you'll like this one because, Sarah, we get a lot of uh, comments in our videos. Mm -hmm. And one of them said, how do you or are you going to code the BMW i3? And I thought coding. And I looked it up and I said, well, it's, a, it's like a way to hack or to sort of reprogram the car. Like you have to be able to speak binary. Yeah. So here it is. Do you want to know how to code your BMW i3? 001. Zero, zero, one. Sarah. 1100. One, zero, no. Zero. no, that's not how? Sarah. Explain to them how you code a BMW i3. I have no idea. I don't even know what it is. Okay, I also have no idea, but we know somebody who does because they did it. Oh, good. So you know what that means. Time for Let's Ask Andy. Andy. Okay, so we're here with Andy Sue from Toronto, the one and only, Sarah. The Drive the Lightning Canadian correspondent. <laughs> right, yeah, right. It's an honorary title only. Honorary I, well, title. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, Andy, we're hoping you can explain to us a little bit about this coding or jailbreaking or hacking or whatever you want to call it that you do to your BMW i3. Because I tried to get Sarah to explain it to me, but she won't tell me what it's about. <laughs> so, could you please explain to me what you meant when you messaged about coding your BMW i3? Yeah, sure thing. So uh, in the BMW community, coding makes reference to modifying your car's uh, abilities uh, from factory. So uh, depending on where your car was destined, certain options were locked out for whatever reason. So with the BMW i3 for North America, uh, several things were locked out, uh, especially in the early model cars. Uh, the capacity of the gas tank was locked out. Uh, the actual range extender menu was uh, turned off for the North American cars, uh, amongst other little options uh, that came standard everywhere else. So you're able to then go back and adjust the way the car came and be able to unlock this stuff. Is that what you're talking about? Like changing the settings internally? Exactly. It's <laughs> literally... Changing the settings, putting a wow. checkbox uh, to say yes or no, or in this case, active or unassigned. Um, it You can set your car up so that it is the European spec versus the North American spec. So what kind of things did you try now with your BMW? What are some of the things you've, you know, checked or activated? Uh, well, for myself, I decided to go with the most uh, popular option. So... The first one being the activation of the range extender menu, uh, which was disabled for the North American market because of um, things that would have not passed California's emission laws at the time. So it was as simple as putting a checkbox into the option and then the car would re uh, reboot after you code it. And then magically, an extra menu appears in the menus. Interesting. And what kind of options are on that menu now that it's unlocked? Uh, for the range extender, uh, it actually allows you to manually control when it turns on. So the whole oh. idea of the range extender was to be able to give you extended range. But in North America, it would only turn on once we hit about 6% remaining battery. So you would always have to run the car all the way down before it comes on. Okay. Okay, so, so first, with, you're I'll, officially our hero, <laughs> and you should never cut off your hero, so go ahead, sorry. Sorry. No wrong, no wrong. So with the range extender option enabled, it allows you to turn your range extender on and off once the battery has depleted to 75% or lower. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing extended drives where you want to take the expressway or freeway to, to a destination and then use your battery in town you can really extend your range wow that's incredible oh, interesting well thank you california for uh moving the audio industry electric but shame on you for cutting out these cool features well <laughs> that's I, awesome. I don't know what their motive was but well they're, they're just... anyway andy knows <laughs> andy why does yeah, california it... do what they did uh, it was this whole concept about uh, how far an electric car could go. So the BMW uh, is very unique in that it has the optional onboard backup generation system uh, from factory. So uh, the early models with the smaller capacity battery, the 60 amp hour battery, uh, the gas motor 
could actually have the same mileage or greater. So then it wasn't a battery electric car than if your gas backup could go further gotcha. or equal. Got okay. It. Well, that's kind of like a, Interesting. almost like a technicality with the BMW i3 because of the way the range extender works. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. just, but anyway, so you, you unlock the range extender, you're able to manually switch it on and off, which we can't do with my mom's BMW i3. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. What else? What else did you unlock? Uh, the other popular option that I actually didn't have to because I read after the fact uh, was the capacity of the gas tank. So the gas tank actually holds 2.4 gallons, right. but when you're using it, it says uh, you only have access to 1.9 gallons, and that applied to the uh, 14, 15, and 16 model years. Uh, 17 onwards, uh, because the battery was enlarged, the car could go further on battery than it could on gas, so they didn't lock it. So if you had an earlier model car, you could kind of give yourself free mileage by unlocking the software limited gas tank so you're saying that of course the gas tank size itself doesn't actually change but if your car is an older model and it's not coded then it will tell you it's full when it actually has more space for some extra gasoline if you wanted to put it in something like that okay. well when you fill when you fill it up it'll always fill up to the 2.4 gallons okay. however with the software locked it would only let you use up 1.9 gallons oh. before it goes to empty oh. or well it okay. reads empty okay so i just had it the opposite way of how it actually works yeah it blocked out the not, bottom end of the gas tank the not the top is. end of the gas it's tank. how low the the out is yeah <laughs> interesting <laughs> yes exactly exactly okay. So, so what else? You got the range extender, you've got the gas tank uh, capacity. What and, else were you able to unlock? And my favorite one. So with the 3G sunset in America happening sooner than in Canada, a lot of cars uh, lost the ability to use the My BMW app, mm -hmm. uh, which was great for uh, checking on your charge status. But most importantly, you could pre-warm your car. Right. Or precondition the car, I should say. Um, so with the, um, with the coding, you can unlock other features and this feature didn't come from factory, but it's one of those things you can do with your car. So now with my car from the key fob, I can activate preconditioning without the app. Awesome. Oh. So you just talk into the key fob and say, warm up the car. I wish <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it actually allowed me to reassign what some of the buttons do on the remote fob. So instead of having the, um, oh, the, the red emergency uh, panic. Panic, oh, button. panic button. <laughs> yep. Uh, now when I hold it, it will then turn on the preconditioning and the car is nice and toasty or cool, depending on what time of year it is before you get in. That is so, you know, you talk about the 3G sunset. If you don't know what that means, that's when the 3G network stopped working and like our broke Nissan Leaf, yeah, broke our <laughs> Nissan Leafs app just like it did your BMW. So we can't pre-warm or preheat our car, right? And either. I, I think it's totally appropriate that you reprogram the panic button because when I wake up in the morning and it's four degrees and I have to go out to the car, if it's not pre-warmed, I am going to panic. So this is my <laughs> pre-warmer now. Yeah. Until we figure out the workaround, which. And I'm her dishwasher, and I'm her vacuum. Uh, Person, I'm your everything. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's incredible, Andy. That's so cool. What about the you mentioned before the AM radio? What's the deal with the AM radio with the BMW? Ah, so th this one's really interesting. So when I purchased the car, I had no idea it didn't have AM radio, and I use AM radio a lot in my other car uh, prior because it was uh, a great source for news and traffic alerts. So I would be listening to that when I'm commuting or delivering or, or whatever I had to do. I would know what the traffic situation was like. And the BMW i3 did not come with the AM radio. Um, wow. Through the forum, I heard that, oh, some of them have HD radio. Mine did not have that option either. So I had to rely on regular radio, which wasn't as uh, frequent. 
And then I discovered that in one of the menus, you could actually turn on AM radio, which was one of those things that was also disabled in the car from factory. Interesting. Now, why would they disable AM radio? I mean, is it so harmful that people listen to the news and weather? I mean, what am I missing here? Because they think it's an 80s technology. And they were like, no, this is a car of the future, not of the 80s. Oh, boy. Okay, Andy, (laughs) please fill us in. Why do you think they did that? Uh, Well, uh, from what I read, uh, it was because there is some sounds of interference from the electronics in the car, which would make the AM reception sound, well, more like AM reception. And after coding it and enabling the AM radio again, which is just, it magically shows up in the menu. um, It sounds like AM radio and you get static, you get uh, all the normal sounds. But on top of that, uh, under certain conditions, you actually can hear the electric motor wind up and wind down. So it's kind of like a Jetsons kind of sound. Oh, cool. That's cool, though. <laughs> I'd want that on just for a sound effect all the time if it was me. That'd be neat. Okay, quick quiz, Andy Sue. Put you on the spot. What does AM mm-hmm. stand for? Oh, um, analog modulation. Okay, Sarah, what's your best guess? And hopefully it's better than his. Oh, no, I was with them 100%. I liked it. Okay, maybe you're both right. I thought it was <laughs> FM was frequency modulation. I thought AM was aerial modulation, but yours sounds smarter. Analog sounds smarter to me. It sounds more 80s. Everything yeah. was analog. I'm not going to look it up. So I'm just going to decide you two are right on that. <laughs> I'll bet you there's a graphic right now playing what it actually means. <laughs> yeah, there might be. Give a second. All right, Eddie, one more question. Now, sure this is this is the question why people probably clicked the video in the first place. How did you do it? How did you code your BMW i3? It's really easy. Um, you can get the app from the App Store or uh, or the Android. Um, Google Play. Google Play, thank you. Sorry. Um, I'm clearly with Apple. Clearly. So when you, you can look up the, uh, the most... Uh, readily available app is called Bimmer Code. B I M M E R Code. Yep. Okay. Bimmer Code. Yep. And uh, you download it, and it will actually tell you the list of OBD2 approved adapters that work with the software. Okay. Um, I bought mine off of Amazon, um, plugged it into the car, synced the phone to the adapter, and lo and behold, all the options. Nice. That's amazing. So when I'm in the app, I'll already know what adapter I have to buy. Yes. uh, It'll it'll, uh, send you to their webpage, which has a list of approved adapters uh, and where you can even buy them. Wow. Um, Pick any one. Was it it hard to find the adapter? I mean, when you went to Amazon looking for it, was it right there easy to find or did you have to dig for it? Uh, it was actually a link on their webpage. Oh, oh. so they well, got they got crazy. paid. They got paid one of them affiliate smart links. Smart on, on them. Good Very on smart them. Bimmer they code. Should. Yeah, well so, done. So, and Bimmer Code is that a free app? Uh, unfortunately, it's a paid app, okay. and uh, in my opinion, though, w- well worth every cent because it gives you all these abilities that you might uh, have even thought about uh, trying. And the best part of all is. Don't be afraid of messing up because you can undo things. Oh, nice. That's good to know. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it stores some kind of revert to default setting situation in there somewhere. Yes. It it makes a backup for every time you do a coding session in case you decide to undo it because maybe it's an option that really you didn't find useful. Wow. Gotcha. Gotcha. Andy, we can't thank you enough for well, teaching us this. Oh, Sarah's got another question. I do have another question. So mm-hmm. you just, you do the coding and then do you have to restart the car or, or it just automatically <laughs> goes into, it just works? Does it transform into like a robot? Is there a it's, poof of smoke and shit. some magic happens? Uh, it'll <laughs> actually freak out some people. So oh, what oh. will happen is the car will then reboot itself uh, depending on what it is that you're uh, coding, uh, your um, infotainment might reboot or your display screen might uh, reboot. It, it just depends on what it is you're uh, changing. 
but what will happen, it'll make some bings and bongs and maybe some error messages <laughs> pop up uh, or, or other lights might just pop up. It's all temporary. It works itself through uh, after a restart or a couple of restarts. It's perfectly normal. You didn't brick your car. <laughs> um, at least I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I could just see uh, Sarah. Oh, I would. Doing it, and they're saying beeping and flashing like R2-D2, and, and then, then she just I passes out. And then I the panic button, so I'm hitting panic. She said panic, the air conditioning's the air coming conditioning on. the air conditioning is coming on, and that does feel nice, so that's good, but so <laughs> yeah, if it, if it thanks does, for that warning. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, that's a good heads up. I'm sure people will appreciate that. If you have any hate mail to send, just send it directly to Andy. If something <laughs> bad happened, you know, don't, it's not, it's not, it's, send it to Canada. <laughs> And you think, Blame it on Canada. what's that? <laughs> Blame it on Canada. That's what everybody does. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, some neighbors up to the north. That's the problem. Andy, thank you. Or that way. Or that way. Yeah. yeah. I went and looked at a map the other day from where your house to my house. And if I'm here, then you're like here. Just a little bit north Just and a, a little bit whole north. lot east. Yeah. Mostly <laughs> east. Michigan. Yes. Yes. Andy, cannot thank you enough for taking the time to answer these questions. Yes, thank uh, you. It saved me having to do research. This is the laziest thing I've ever done, is get a question <laughs> and then just ask Andy because, you know, I don't I have to do all this typing and reading and whatnot, you know. It's like, well, oh. it's really helpful to talk to someone who's actually gone through the process yeah. because then you know what it takes, you know what to look for, and that's just super helpful. And just a quick note, Andy is not sponsored by Bimmer Code. We're not sponsored by Bimmer Code. This is just information. That's it. That's not a sales pitch. Yep. Thank you so much. We appreciate you being here again, Andy. Thank you. Well, thank you guys for having me on. Thank you. Yeah, if anybody wants to watch an interview with Andy from before when he first bought his BMW, check this out. It's going to be right here between me and Sarah. And that's it. Thumbs up if you like this. Thumbs down if you don't like Andy. Two thumbs up if you like Sarah. <laughs> one up, one down if you like Sarah, not Chad. All right. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you.